This is our news, the weekend edition, and on the broadcast tonight. Hear the mixed views of parents and guardians towards the holiday extension for school teachers. Plus, on the attack, the Angliston Member of Parliament blasts the Free National Movement's performance in office so far. And we introduce you to an Olympian turned entrepreneur. news is brought to you by Alive. Good evening, I'm Andrew Nolt and thanks so much for joining us. Topping the news, parents giving mixed reactions to a decision by the Ministry of Education to give public school teachers and administrators an extended Christmas break for their hard work over the last 12 months. We get that story tonight from our Jared Higgs. Following an announcement by Education Minister Jeff Lloyd that public schools would reopen on January 7th instead of January 2nd, Several parents and guardians are sounding off on the decision. What they're going through right now with the race and all of that, they should get a time off. You think it'll make it harder for parents who have a difficulty with finding people to look after their kids? I don't think so. Teachers human like just like us do, so I guess they need a little extra time. So, And we as parents, we, um, we could get a little extra time with our kids too. They put up with it a lot. Kids are not easy these days, and they have their own opinion, and they voice it. According to Lloyd, the decision was made in order to celebrate the country's hard-working teachers and administrators. Lloyd's tenure as Minister of Education has not been without issue. Mold and infrastructural concerns have plagued C.H. Reeves School, ultimately resulting in those teachers voting to strike. This teacher, who didn't wish to have her identity shown, was thrilled for the extra days and said she sure her students will be pleased as well. Extremely happy. Why? I wish it was later. Why? I get a few extra days off. You're a teacher? Yes. Oh, okay. That, how do you think that the children are going to react to having those few extra days? They probably feel just the way that I do. <laughs> do you think that they're going to come back to the classroom more energized and ready to learn? I, I think that will be their intention too. Now, whether they stick to that, it's up to them. However, not everybody was pleased with the decision. Things like that needs to be established, just last minute thing. Now, if it's emergency, I could understand that. That's, that's acceptable. But short notice, because school have to be reopened Monday because of Wednesday, not Monday, not, I mean, not Wednesday, Monday. That's something poisonous. I don't want them to be running around, going this way, the next way, fooling around with people place. Money have to be spent during the three days they are home, whereas money still will be spent even if they're in school, but more money will be spent while they're home doing nothing. This private school vice principal says while the extended Christmas vacation doesn't impact him, he would like to see longer breaks for his colleagues as well. I look at a school opening in the middle of the week, it would be a little challenging for the students to get up to go, I mean, Monday, Tuesday, they are off and go to school on Wednesday, especially after uh, John Goodnew the New Year's Parade. Some of them will have, will have gone there and then coming back to school in the morning, it will be a challenging one for them. Lloyd also thanked the Bahamas Union of Teachers for its cooperation and participation in this endeavor. For our News Weekend, I'm Jared Hicks. All right, thanks a lot, Jared. Well, it was the year of the blame game. That's how outspoken Angliston MP Glennis Hannah Martin is categorizing the Minnesota administration's time in office this year. Hannah Martin says while many expected the, to, the Minnesota administration to deliver on its promises during its first full year in office, she says the FNM government has done nothing but stuck to its old played out script of blaming the progressive Liberal Party. With more, here's our Jasmine Brown. They have been completely inconsistent in their blame game because it is, it's being disingenuous. So um, that's, they've wasted valuable time blaming uh, the, admin, uh, the former administration when they should have been implementing policy. That's Hannah Martin summing up what she calls the government's mismanagement of the country. Hannah Martin says not only does she believe the Minnes government was not ready to lead, she says they are quickly finding out that their grandiose promises on the campaign trail were unrealistic and undeliverable. From the very beginning, 
they proved to be um, a political force that was apparently interested in winning office but was not able to play it out in terms of the policy initiatives. She also stunned the government for continuing to blame the PLP, despite the fact that the PLP was voted out more than a year and a half ago. On the blame game issue, it's interesting if, if anyone goes back and Googles the inconsistent statements of this Minister of Finance. First, the, the PLP was responsible for this. Then he says, well, it's nobody's responsible, it's just generations or successive governments. Um, then you hear the, the, the speech he gave in terms of how he discounted the impact of hurricanes. Now all of a sudden hurricanes are a big focus of this government. They went to Washington, they're going to borrow money from the IDB. It's, it, they have been completely inconsistent in their blame game because it is, it's been disingenuous. Hannah Martin cited a series of missteps that she says only continues to hurt the country economically. She said at best the FNM's time in office has been tumultuous as she highlighted the Oban deal, the purchase of the Grand Lucayan Hotel, industrial unrest and the surprise move to hike value at a tax by 60 percent. I think that we, we have to be very concerned. In a nutshell, I believe that they have, they came in um, making promises and, and putting out philosophical positions that they were not committed to. They wasted time blaming a former administration. They mismanaged the economy, making many missteps and poor decisions motivated by political reasons. Um, they have uh, done many things which have undermined the progress of this economy. And um, they, there is n nothing that I see happening out there which gives any sort of promise of um, a, a, an economy that's going to grow and expand. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. The recent spate of shooting incidents has caused the National Security Minister to renew his push to seize all illegal weapons. Marvin Dame said while police currently use leads to make these captures, there is room for improvement to see to it that firearms are off the streets. Especially those assault rifles. And we're doing that through our neighborhood watch council. We're gonna, we're gonna very early in the new year have, uh, we're going to use intelligence, we're going to also use our relationships with our various community groupings, and we're going to develop uh, a, an even greater focus uh, uh, against firearms. That, that's, that's a big issue. The police are doing a tremendous job in locating them. Bishop Simeon Hall recently called for stiffer penalties for those found with guns. The National Security Minister said while he believes in penalties, it's individuals that they need to target. I am a strong believer in penalties, don't get me wrong, okay? I believe that there are some individuals out there who are hell-bent on no matter what it is that you seek to do to try to rehabilitate them, they are just not for it, okay? Those are the individuals that we need to isolate and get off of our streets. And, and come 2019, you're going to see an even greater impetus to do just that. OK, um, because we're hoping to have a much better year than 2018. Well, he's gone from running on the track to running an app designed to satisfy the hungry. Tonight, our colleague Joaquin sits down with two-time Olympian Jamal Roll and talks about his new role as a business owner. <laughs> he's traded in his sprints and a life on the track for a life of entrepreneurship. When we first started, we were like uh, online delivery, mm. food delivery. But we were like, why stop there? We can deliver anything. An app that brings the desire of ordering your favorite food items and having it delivered to your door. And Roll says he saw it fitting to start at home. We're at our destination. It took about 15 minutes from uh, News Cafe Sandy Port to here downtown. That's, that's what Runners is. On demand, you... you open your phone, you go to the app, you click on what you want, mm -hmm. you track it all the way to your, to your home, you have a full profile of the driver, everything is secured, uh, it's paid for through credit or debit card, there's no cash accepted, unless you want to tip your driver's cash. Mm -hmm. But everything is based on safety, uh, security, and convenience. Another reason why runners came to be, a new opportunity for smaller businesses. You have this business that's located in the urban area where it's not frequented by many people, so it's not getting that much exposure. You're, however, now you're on an app where everyone can see your business. Everyone can see the products that you offer. 
Mm-hmm. So now you, you just lengthen your tentacles. And he said the app isn't just for those interested in ordering food, but those perhaps looking to be a part. There are actually two apps. Uh-huh. There's a customer app and there's a driver app. If you want to sign up as a driver, you download the Runner's Driver app, uh, all your qualifications that, that, that we have there. Despite being a runner for decades, Rold said this new chapter of his life is promising as the app, he said, is taking off. It's something we plan on taking internationally because it's an app. That was one of the allure of starting an app. You can take it anywhere in the world. If you want to find out information, www.runners.com. We're on all social media platforms. Runners on demand on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For our news, I'm Kyle Joaquin. All right, thanks a lot, Kyle. We will take our first break here, but still ahead tonight. The National Security Minister issues a warning over false missing persons reports. That story and more when our news returns.